Hello, and welcome back. Dark and random Mass Effect 3. Hello. We last left off with a bit of technical difficulties while we were checking out a wealth of information in the Spectre Terminal. I'm that sorry. Not like I could do much about that. Computers are fucking weird. I think it was the modem in that one. Mm. I think something, I don't know. Internet was very weird. But I believe this is where we are, where you where you were cut off. A raid on Port, on port, a port raid on Port Melix. Tratigos, renowned for having the coldest winters of any Asari colony, is now the site of a rare triumph against the Reapers on the Asari front. Masterminded by Matriarch General Teresa, this victory is won at Port Melix, a repair and resupply hub converted into an indoctrination camp. Overseen by a Reaper destroyer, the guerrilla submarines were hopelessly outgunned. With no chance of surviving a firefight, the Matriarch turned into an alternative stratagem. Engineers drilled into the ice to bury thermonuclear devices, while submarines targeted structural weak points beneath the ice shelf. Adapting age-old tactics, she harried enemy strongholds to lure away husks with focused guerrilla strikes. To entice the Reaper, Teresa leaked the location of her flagship and the Reaper fell into her snare. Buried explosives detonated, rendering the ice, rending the ice and sending it plummeting into the bitter ocean. Once trapped, submarines hammered its shields with torpedoes and collapsed the ice shelf around it. The flotilla surfaced and commenced bombardment of the indoctrination camps. Crews stocked and rearmed their vessels while commandos evacuated civilians and booby-trapped the settlement. By the time the Reaper freed itself, the flotilla slipped away unchallenged. Nice. Our sources in Thessia Command claimed that Matriarch General Teresa was reassigned to more vital battlefields. Although loath to leave behind her sisters, she accepted under the condition that the naval resistance received missile payloads capable of destroying a Reaper. Fair enough. Who says you don't need boats in the future? Right. Vorcha Social Research. The Void oh, Devils, my. a Project Hellion, the Vorcha pilots, mm -hmm. and the Asari Rage Vorcha on Parasek have revealed many insights into the species. The most considerable discovery is that the frenzied violence associated with them is largely caused by their broken society and is not a product of evolution. With the successes of the Void Devils, the, de the destruction of the Parasek colony, and a near martyrdom of the docile, intelligent Vorcha raised there. Now is the time to use the media to rebrand the Vorcha. This will bring the Vorcha into the war in a more inclusive manner, providing masses of ground troops and cheap labor regardless of their intellect. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, I see nothing wrong with this. Terraform to Chunka. Following the Genophage cure, the Krogan are experiencing hope for their future, and it is shown in their dedication to the war effort. In the spirit of supporting the rebirth of their people, diplomats want to offer the Krogan a salvaged Geth weather device to help the, restore, help the restoring Chunka's habitability. This is a bold move to lure them into closer cooperation with the Citadel, but technology from the device is being incorporated into the Crucible, potentially reducing its viability. Authorizing this gift would remove the weather device from the Crucible, but could ensure the Krogan support for the war. I think it's worth it. Alright then, let's go with it. <coughs> Portable Keystone Mechanism Informants from Tachunk have uncovered attempts by a Krogan shaman to use their keystone ritual against the Reapers by luring Thresher Maws to significant areas of significant husk activity. This new tactic stems from eyewitness reports of the Thresher Maw Kalros dragging a Reaper beneath the Earth, but the Krogan are struggling to create a portable version of the Keystone. Spectre authorization would send a team of researchers to Chunko to finish their work on the device, allowing it to be field tested. I see nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Sick giant worms <laughs> on them. <coughs> ah. Updates on homeworlds. The Kuna, the Elcor, suffered heavy losses, but the Reapers have been slowed by their herding instinct, which prevents the formation of megacities and other metropolises. Are in dire need of support to evacuate more of their people from the planet. Earth. Now believed to be 400 Reaper processing ships on Earth. They, these are estimated to be harvesting a million people a day. Indoctrinated countries are fighting back against the resistance under the behest of their Reaper overlords. And this has stretched the resistance to its limits. Reapers appear to be concentrating movements on Western Europe. Reason for this? Unknown. Karshan. Mm -hmm. 
Oculi are shooting down any and all spy drones that attempt to reach the Batarian homeworld. We have no information. Palavin. The Turians continue to hold on, on Palavin, but the Reapers appear to be diverting capital and processing ships to help pacify the planet. Defenses on Manet are beginning to fall, fail. When they do, the Reapers will hit Palavan with far more force than at any point in the war so far. The Turians have revealed that the ancient Valuvian sect has returned among indoctrinated Turians. Often these cultures are accompanied by huge, intelligent husks that are vaguely reminiscent of the Turians themselves. Oof. Parnak. That's the Yog homeworld, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe? I don't remember whose home that world that is. Oh, it, yeah, it is. Sorry. An unidentified ship has been spotted briefly in orbit over the Yogg homeworld. Though the cruisers of the PIM fleet gave chase, the mysterious craft fleet at FTL. A Grenipa station cannot be reached following their latest transmission. Thessia, well, we know exactly how Thessia's got doing. Yeah. A sorry homeworld has been attacked by a huge fleet of Reapers, including husk forces and indoctrinated slaves. Ground forces were not prepared for an assault on this scale, city-states falling in hours rather than days or weeks, with the matriarchs calling for evacuation. Turvis. I'm not sure who Turvis is. Ships have been detected in the vicinity of Turvis. We have yet to confirm whether they are Reaper origin. There are other homeworlds currently under Reaper attack, but these are not the only planets with intelligence worth noting. But these are the only planets. Spy drones have been diverted to these minor powers to attempt to gain an update on their pa situation. Shit, 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 and shit. Basically. Updated status on the Vortcha. Void devils are running sorties over H Hatash and other large cities, provo providing, proving successful at destroying Oculi. Typical infighting of the numerous Vortcha clans appears to be subsiding with the arrival of the Reapers. Theorize they're too busy fighting against husks to fight amongst themselves. A handful of extra yeah. A handful of extra net reports suggesting Vorch are being converted into husks. We have no physical evidence yet. Current belief is that Hashak will be a difficult battleground for the Reapers to pacify. Vorch are numerous, vicious, and are too stupid to back down from a fight. Standard military tactics fail when their bodies metabolize and change at such an incredible place. They will be overcome with time, but for now, they are pulling more Reapers away from the colonies. Again on the Vorchuk, Reapers have encountered little formal resistance to the fractured, self-indulgent na nature of Vorchuk. Reaper attempts to intimidate the Vorchuk fail at every hurdle. The synthetics fail to understand that Vorchuk becomes submissive only when physically dominated in person. Hatash, the planetary capital, one of 23 cities claiming that title is suffering the brunt of the husk forces. <laughs> like that that sums up Vorcha right there. They can't even decide which city is the capital. <coughs> Reaper virus on Lorek in the Omega Nebula. This one's extranet VIs have detected unusual comms broadcasting from Lorek's capital, Jalnor. Piecing together the audio has so far proven rather onerous due to the encoded Batarian transmissions and enemy interference. Yet, preliminary results hint at a disquieting situation in the city. The following words are transcribed excerpts that have been recovered so far. Came out of nowhere. Fucker infected my... changed before my eyes. Infected with kind of virus. Unnatural. Reaper. You think that was a husk? Are you in... That was not a husk. That was a... This one's VI monitors... VI's monitor petabytes of information every hour, assigning intercepted comms to categories according to complex procedural analysis patterns. These snippets of audio were listed as very high alert. It's too early to predict what's happening in Jalnor, but references to infection and the virus's worrying development in Reaper Stratagem. For an analysis of these comms are incoming, and this one will update you when they arrive. Thank you. Sounds like adjutants to me. Oh boy. Order planetary bombardment. Oh boy. The humans on Olor are being converted into husks to bloat Reaper forces in the sector. Careful monitoring of the situation has concluded that the Salarians betrayed their human neighbors but are now being indoctrinated and experimented on. Military experts are calling for the bombardment of the colony to prevent the spread of indoctrinated agents, reduce Reaper ground forces, 
and to serve as an example of what will happen to other colonies that betrayed our allies. Spectre authorization will launch the fleet. Yeah. It's a bad it's not saving them anymore. <laughs> it's a bad day when you order a bombardment. Mm -hmm. Anything over here? Yeah, there's Nah. Yeah. And a whole lot more war assets. <sighs> I think that's everything we gotta do here. We are closing in on the end game very fast now. Alright, let's head back home. We have a story mission to do. And then the last DLC. Oh my. It's gonna be a trip. Boy, new messages. You know something we hadn't looked at in a while? Crew manifest. Oh, yeah. Chief engineer Adams, or we can make Tally the chief engineer. That sounds like it would be a useful idea. Service record dossier 2183 pilgrimage from the quarry and vessel Araya. 2183, Engineering Ge Expert, SSV Normandy, SR1. 2184, Special Operations, Korean Navy. 2185, Criminal Action, Activating Geth within the Korean Fleet, Verdict, Not Guilty. 2186, Promoted to Admiral. And 2186, Engineer, SR2. As again, we were present for basically all of that. Sure, let's have Tally as our chief engineer. Garris is our marine officer. Joker is the XO. Who else can be XO? A lot of people. <coughs> Service record unknown. No shit. Let's see. Is there anyone else we can swap out? We have two squads of Marines. I don't have an entire yeah. platoon of Marines added into there. Yeah, why not? Something in an army or something. <coughs> Plenty of Marines. Extra medical team members. Ooh, decisions, decisions. Health, health and power cooldown, or power damage. Ooh. Those are all very cool. I'm, I'm kind of flipping between these two. Uh, let's take the study because you do actually use your powers quite a bit. But I'm very used to that. I, I like the yeet power. Yeah, that too, but I meant... Even before the we used engineering, the, uh, <coughs> virtual geth. a geth improves performance of the Helios thruster module. A Corian Canerador Vastabra allows installation and maintenance of Corian Ezo afterburner. My. Another Corian Zawen Vasauskor improves improves the scanner, which will basically be useless. A physical geth improves the performance of the ship defenses, which I don't know what would do. Another Corian improves the defense systems. And geth improves the, <coughs> the scanner. 
And we have how many slots for engineering? Two. What does improving the scanner even do? Don't know, and I'm pretty sure it would be useless to us. I mean, if it improved the range of it, then maybe. Eh. Would be less annoying to go around the system scanning everything. <laughs> I think these two are probably the best. Okay. Oh, not that, that. Talk about having a uh, very varied crew. Wait. Mm -hmm. Oh! This is the same Corian that in the second game runs a little shop on Omega, and you can give him the money to get off Omega. Oh. Yeah, without Commander Shepard's intervention, Ken would not have been able to complete his pilgrimage. <laughs> <coughs> That's fucking great. That's, yeah. Eager to repay Shepard's kindness, Ken Redor was one of the first to volunteer to serve aboard the Normandy. Yes, you can come right aboard, kiddo. Yeah. Non crew specialists. Not sure how to do anything with that. Oh, I guess we can just b bring them along if we want to. Huh. On to Citadel, spending a lot of time yelling at fruit machines in between buying parts for Jesse and gathering mercenary buddies. Yeah, well, sounds like Zaid. Try adding Kasumi. Let's see what happens. Um, don't worry about it. But with them, do you think that might actually let us bring them on missions? Yeah, but I feel like it'll also cause jank since they're not intended to be. I'm curious. Oh, don't worry. You'll get your chance. Alright, so what have we got here? From Shaman Erdnot. I'll never get the hang of these things. A sorry design crap. The keystone is in ruins. Your technicians tore it apart to build their thresher lures. Our history and customs torn down once again. No change there. Krogan always valued survival over, over tradition. I thought humans were different. The PKMs, as your damn technicians call it, or keystones everyone else, have hit the husks hard. Only madmen would run into those would run into those middle, middle of Reaper territory to plant one of the, one of those things. Luckily, we have plenty. When the <laughs> earth shakes and bodies fly, you know it was worth it. One tradition is gone, but sacrificing it might have brought us the chance to make up new ones. We'll ha we'll take them to Manet next. The Turians are gonna piss themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Good to know it worked. Hierarchy Command, new husk variants. From General Corinthus. Shepard, I'm under the impression that you authorize research into the portable keystone mechanisms that the Krogan have been testing on Manet. I wish this email was praising you for your foresight, but I believe you lacked any when you decided on this course of action. The first dozen tests were so impressive that they even had me convinced. They must also convince the Reapers, as they have converted all the Thresher models they can find into husks. I have reported reports from other Turian control worlds that have used these PKMs, and they're reporting the same. The Re Reapers are now using Thresher models. With respect, do not authorize the Krogan to test further weapons on our worlds without our consent. Whoops. Oof. From Grill. ED, after this was flagged as junk email, I took the liberty to correct what appears to be a grammatical abomination. If the translation is unsatisfactory, please let me know and I shall update my processes accordingly. Shepard, well done with the media. Vorcha are strong. Vorcha are clever. Many are trapped on Heshock. Don't worry, we're sending transports to collect them. They'll turn up on Citadel soon. We'll fight for you. We'll kill all the Reapers. Maybe we'll kill Batarians, too, if you don't need them. <laughs> <coughs> I like this guy. Yeah. All right, what's Bray got about adjutants? Yep. 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 
My team hunted down the last adjutants on Omega, but victory was short-lived. We've discovered there's an infestation on Lorek, and they're sweeping through the capital city. We don't know how they got there, but if they get off world, we're in trouble. Arya's demanded you finish the job, and to do that, you'll need a nuke. Find one at Harrods and signal me when you've blown them apart. <sighs> Nothing's ever simple, is it? Mm -hmm. Speaking of the Vorchuk. Oh boy. A line. Kitoi Ward. Theater goers were stunned when the finale of France, Francis Kitt's 14 hour Elcor Hamlet was interrupted by a score of mischievous Vorchuk. Tarlos Amphitheater may boast the most sophisticated security systems in Kitoi Ward, but even these were not enough to prevent them from interrupting the finale. Stealing entrees, dismantling props, and brawling with several of the galaxy's most famous socialites, including Jalen Lepp, ex-husband of Aish Ashland. Footage of the riot has been broadcast all over the Citadel's excellent feeds, with many vids adding humorous music and sound effects to the Vorcha and the CSEC officers that arrested him. This has proven to be a lighthearted distraction for citizens during these difficult times. <laughs> CSEC is blaming the riot on the recent media coverage of the Vorcha and research into changing their social behavior to remove their penchant for violence. They punctuated this claim by revealing statistics pr proving that a major vorcha -led crime wave has spread across five ward arms. Questions remain over how so many of these misunderstood species have found a way onto the station. When we interviewed director Francis Kidd, he told a and that he's been inspired by the Vorcha and is now playing an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet Featuring all Vorcha and Batarian cast. <laughs> that, that is a... <coughs> oh my gosh. From Ken. I don't care if that did more damage than it was worth or not. <laughs> it was worth it anyway. Oh my god. I did not expect that. And a message from Ken. I don't know if you remember me, but you helped me leave Omega and continue my pilgrimage. I just want to thank you for everything you've done for our people. After I left Omega, I returned to the migrant fleet with some discarded engine schematics I found, and have been working to apply them to some of our ships. We recently yes, had a major. No, we hired you. Yeah, we recently had a major breakthrough and have begun outfitting them into our drive cores. I know I can never fully repay you for what you did to me, but I volunteered to serve on Normandy. Maybe that's a start. Kila Salai. Eh, it's kind of adorable. Yeah. Let's check engineering. Oh, hey, achievement. Fully crewed in Normandy. That's definitely a modded achievement. Or maybe they might just change the requirement. Okay, toughest mission. Horizon. No fair, I haven't joined up with you yet. Fine, the dead reaper then. Really? The husks just ran up to us. Have you ever noticed that I carry a sniper rifle and you're the one who likes things at short range? And you prefer to keep everything at a distance? From husks? Absolutely. Creepiest <laughs> thing we fought? The Thorian. Your turn. I'm going with the Rachni. The Queen? But we didn't fight her either time. No, the little ones. They look like spiders and they scuttle right toward you. I thought you liked it when things got up close and personal. Not when it's spiders. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is if you mod the game to get her early uh, and take her on the Rachni mission, when they start popping out of the little uh, pod, she actually starts shouting, Spiders! 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 <laughs> yep, Cory and Ezo Afterburner. Bonus sublight speed and FTL speed. Yeah, that's pretty useful. Well worth it. I can't scroll this. It won't let me scroll. Hmm. Oh well. I will. Talk to you later. Oh. Well, yeah, at least we can move faster now. Oh, there's that guy. Yeah, there's our virtual geth. I mean, they don't really need a body yet. <coughs> Correct. Worth it. All right then. Mm-hmm. So 
there shouldn't be much left but to... Well, I guess we got, need to go in a nuke some adjutants. Let's go and get that done. Don't want that getting out of hand. Yeah, that will be an issue. Hate those things. Oh, mm -hmm. I was just. <laughs> That's Salarian I'm using you. Yes. <laughs> Most of the blood stains in the cockpit have been removed. We have tritons, so resonant warp bomb. Device is considered so dangerous to an ecosphere that the Citadel Guards Citadel Council has forbidden its use on all garden worlds. But desperate times. Yeah, we need to move some adjutants. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. All right, then. The question is, where? Not here. Somewhere in the Omega Nebula. So it has to be somewhere around here. Let's see. Out here? Yeah, there. So, how are we supposed to handle this? Well, clearly, you nuke it. Secure a nuclear bomb and destroy the actions for it. Okay, so we got the nuke. This is the right planet, right? Mm -hmm. Capital city of Lorek. That's Lorec. Mm -hmm. But we can't do anything. Huh. Oh. Nice yeah, that'll do it. As Normandy enters the exosphere, you enter a call from the flagship of Turner's fleet. A hologram of Arya appears on the QEC. Her, stern, her face stern and demeanor cold. The pirate queen doesn't mince her words. If a nuke doesn't destroy Jalnor within the hour, then she's prepared to turn Lorek into slag, regardless of the Citadel's repercussions, or whether you're in the fire, firing line. With the ultimatum set, you begin the operation. 
You're not alone in your descent to the capital city. Dozens of drop shuttles fall on your wake. Friction flames blazing behind them as they tear through the atmosphere. Each car craft carries mechs, mercenaries, and Vorcha, whose sole purpose is to keep the adjutants contained within the blast radius. After locating a landing zone, Cortez clears the area using the Kodiak's front-mounted cannons and you disembark. Your boots touch Jalnor's soil for the first time. The city is a lesson in how not to use the conflicting styles. The tender curves of old Asari arcologies have been modified and choked by the cold, brutalist constructs of their Batarian conquerors. The colony's architectural style clashes at every turn, old and new, graceful and stern. Not even the softly falling snow can make the metropolis endearing. Your squad carries the bomb to the center of the courtyard, the very heart of the city. Shuttles arrive with mercenaries to establish a perimeter around you. Their insignias and colors are unknown, but they look competent, dangerous. In the distance you hear the whine of gunships and dull thudding, ex dull thudding of exploding ordnance. But closer at hand, there's a whisper on the wind. An unnerving sound you heard on Omega once before. On Omega. An adjutant. The mercenaries set their weapons to fire sledgehammer rounds and begin to tear into the enemy, your squad joining them. With little time before Arya's ultimatum end, you set the timer on the warp bomb. Trainer then interrupts you over the radio. She's detecting comm chatter from the slums. It's Cerberus, and they're deploying troops to capture an adjutant specimen and any citizens infected by them. There isn't time to handle both. Do you prevent Cerberus from getting their hands on an adjutant, or do you activate the timer on the warp bomb and let the weapon do its work? Uh, timer. I'm, about to say, I'm pretty sure the nuke will take care of it. The adjutant threat is too terrible to ignore. If you, do if you don't interfere, they will spread like a virulent plague across the galaxy, corrupting entire populations into their eldritch form. If you can destroy them on Lorek, then you would have deprived the Reapers of one of their greatest tools. The warp bomb should eradicate it once and for all. It's time. You open the control console and set the timer, and immediately you regret buying from the stores on Omega. The control panel and holographic display short out, and what you assume is the backup analog detonation system is labeled in an alien script that you cannot translate. translate. After cursing with Herod and his store, you beckon Edie over and order her to decipher the unknown language. While she investigates, you reinforce the perimeter killing several adjutants as they approach and putting down an unfortunate Solarian that rides in agony as the Reaper nanovirus mutates him from within. Hostiles swarm into to the courtyard and the front line begin to crumble. The troops pull into a tighter formation and put distance between them and the adjutants, some resorting to using their Omni tools to carve through enemy flesh. Shepard, I've deciphered the language. It is an obscure Batarian dialect as well as a cipher. I assume they did not want the device falling into the wrong hands. After you set the timer, you call in Cortez for an emergency evac. With Cortez are several other shuttles that, that clear the landing area once again. Just as you climb aboard your shuttle, you, you spot server shuttles tearing up into the sky, each carrying their hideous cargo. The warp bomb will eradicate the adjutant threat on Lorek, but specimen survivor are now in the hands of a hated enemy. You have scored a victory here, but the mission to eradicate the adjutants is not over. So we're probably going to see those bastards again. Mm -hmm. I do not look forward to that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one problem dealt with. Alright then. Speaking of Cerberus, let's go deal with them. Horizon just can't catch a break. First the Collectors, now Cerberus has set up shop. Sounds about right. Javik Tally. Fair enough.
sanctuary facility was devoted to aiding refugees from Reaper controlled systems. The facility went offline recently and no communications have come or gone since. It is unclear why Kai Lang or Cerberus would be interested in sanctuary. If there's a clue to Cerberus here, we find it. Sir, I'm picking up a signal from the facility. It's weak. I I'll try to boost it. Wait, I mean, Lawson? Oriana? That's Miranda's sister. If she's I here, knew it. Far away. That's our link to Cerberus. Approaching the LZ. Seeing some damage, man, but no activity. Damage is a word for it. Looks like there was a full on firefight here. Cerberus does not get a mm -hmm. jump on us this time. Stay sharp, people. A lot of damage, Commander. Yeah, but who was fighting? Everyone hear that? The radio's offline. Something's jamming our signals. Explains no comms leaving the facility. Shit. Survivors. Sniper. Sniper. Sniper indeed. Let's try that again. Everyone hear that? This time without getting your head blown off. Shut up. Explains no comms leaving the facility. Yeah, that cover doesn't really protect you, does it? I'm not sure of that one. It really sucks to be you, doesn't it? Okay, then. Like Got stuck in the water or something. And or looks like whatever. Yeeted her into the wall. About time, <laughs> About time they started killing each other. Sure, in a hurry to <coughs> to leave. <coughs> Civilian processing ratios: adults sixty percent sent to integration, children eighty-five percent sent to integration. Suitable candidates are being assigned to temporary living areas in alphabetical order. Family units are being preserved for ease of processing. Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't that pleasant sounding? All grouped up over here for footage from security cameras, a place to organize the new arrivals. 
Come on, let's keep looking. Hmm. Live ones. Uh oh. <laughs> Isn't it great to just be able to pierce through cover? It was a little weird looking. <laughs> yeah. The one just came up so perfectly behind the other. Anything over here? Just ammo. A security panel. Shutting it down. Strange. An unusual amount of technology for such a facility. We have a back door into the facility. Let's move. Some of this is Reaper tech, Shepard. I'm sure of it. Cerberus has found a way to create an interface between our technology and the Reapers. And Miranda's caught in the middle. Let's pick up the pace. Cerberus, in using Reaper technology. This is going to be bad, isn't it? Yep. Probably. I know it. I'm not even questioning. It's gonna, it's gonna be bad. Just this. Some kind of control center. No power. Look around for a switch. Power switch. There. Yes. This process is known to me. They do not kill what can be useful. I'm sorry, Commander. I think I understand. They're being turned into husks. It's quite a few. Come on. Well, you know, they're just oh. I see huff. They're just more troops for the Reapers. They could destroy yeah. the facility if they escaped. It seems like a stupid risk. The Reapers attacked because this place was a threat. We need to find out why. Hmm. Confirm unsuitable materials reassigned to recycling, whatever that means.
shutting down the power to the processing plant to lock them down. You should keep them out of the entrance as well. Kailang! Shepard, she doesn't know he's here. Loretta Lawson has arrived sooner than expected. You want me to deal with her? Only if she gets in your way. Stay focused on the research data. Find it and get out. Yes, sir. Damn it. Let's move. So now we got Miranda and Kai Ling here. It's just a, it's just a regular family reunion. Mind. Gotta be more where they came from. Yeah, gotta be plenty more. how to control hosts. Yikes. Where is it? Oh, that's a miss. Ding. Got it. Yeah, I realize it wasn't a melee attack, but well, you know. And they say suppressive fire doesn't work. Right. It's certainly suppressing you. That fucking marauder ate the shot. And yeah, the thing about suppressing fire is that it tends to mostly work when you have the numerical advantage. You're pleasant. Come on, come on, try me. Try me. <laughs> Dr. Nuri's legacy work with subject Paul Grayson provided a key element to our work here. Using the addictive drug of red sand to break down the will was inspired, but proved unreliable for general application. We've proven that adrenaline and its cross-species equivalents is most effective and efficient. This is what happens when you allow machines to think for you. You become slaves. The pursuit of efficiency has revealed an important fact. The Reaper's use of dragon's teeth to create husks is ingenious. The Reaper nanites attach themselves to the adrenaline released and quickly move through the body to speed conversion to the final husk state. It's just stuck back there. Yeah. How reaper Bam. Hang on. It's damaged. The no reason why. Maybe we'll find answers. It doesn't make sense. But Cerberus and the Reapers were getting along. What changed? It's working. Heading to the tower to disable the communication scrambler. I have to get word out. Some refugees are turned into husks. Some are indoctrinated and shipped to the elusive man. Whoever's left is used in experiments. 
The data indicates that my father is trying to figure out how Reaper indoctrination works. Tricking refugees with food and shelter only to turn them into test subjects. And for what? Your choices will become less appealing as the Reapers devour your galaxy. She said that shipments were sent to the elusive man. Maybe we can use that to find him. Good catch. Come on. Miranda said she was headed to the tower. First, more load. Progress update. Rejected subjects have proven useful for preliminary genetic testing. Death rates are 100%, of course, but the data being gathered is critical to improving subsequent testing on viable subjects. Note, only approved personnel with Alpha 3 and above level security clearance are allowed to access the genetic waste testing area. Beware of security breaches of any kind will result in immediate contract termination. Now we know what contract termination means for Cerberus. Yeah. Oh, damn. Hey, got it that time. No barriers. Okay, then. Plenty of barriers. Oh, not one of you. Oh, boy, it's that guy again. I could do without you today. Really? You're dying. Oh, he's got his back to me. Shit. Well, so your team is down. Yeah, which works to my advantage. Does he need healing anyway? No, because now it's gonna get shot in the back. Yeah, that too. <coughs> When your shotgun is a cluster grenade launcher, it really changes the battlefield. Yeah. Hey, that bitch. Sounds perfect. No surviving. <laughs> Jeez. There. Oh, hey. Gun. Gun indeed. All right, what do we got here? Creating these husk creatures was our first success. While not true husks, they still respond to Reaper signals. More work ahead, but we are moving forward. We're very close. Understanding the indoctrination process is one thing. However, turning it to our advantage is proving to be quite another. This is assembly line science. The sheer brute force of numbers and repetition is doing the thinking for us. Effective, but discovery happens at a pace. Hmm. Heavy resistance outside the tower. If you're receiving this, I've got evidence you cannot ignore. Confirmation that my father is working for the elusive man. Connection established. I have your report on the process, Mr. Lawson. Cut to the chase. Can you do it? Theoretically, control is possible, yes. The Reaper subjects we converted are responding, but it's difficult to maintain. I thought that might be the case. Not to worry, Henry. With Sanctuary's help, we'll get it sorted. If he can control Reaper minions, we have a potent weapon. I'll play the rest of it. We've done it. We've found a way to co-opt their control signal. As long as the Reaper troops remain in close proximity to our signal, we can maintain control indefinitely. Excellent news. And how could we extrapolate this technique to apply to the Reapers themselves? That's a much bigger challenge. Now we know why the Reapers attacked Sanctuary. They must have discovered what Cerberus was doing. 
That's bad news for the elusive man. But it's good news for us. We finally have our link to Cerberus. Lowering the access ladder. Come on, let's move. One moment, Commander. It isn't finished. Damn it. I hope she's ready for him. Yeah. yeah. We should probably hurry. Internal memo, streamlining procedures. In an effort to streamline our waste elimination process, a high-grade liquefaction compound has been added to the our alkaline hydrolysis disposal systems. Our goal is to ensure that our processing system can meet the expected pr processing ratios as more subjects arrive at this facility. As a result, personnel must, must wear a level 4 hazmat suit at all times while in the disposal area. Well, Industrial science. Yeah. Basically. Shit. Javik, move! I'm pretty sure it just lets you shoot through him anyway. Yeah, but I can't see through him. Minor details. Not important, right? It's so great when it's just a fucking one shot on the bastards. Crap, more ravagers. <laughs> See how well that worked out. Right here. This will get us closer to the tower. Dang it, couldn't roll fast enough. So I one-shot the ones that aren't charging, but don't one-shot the ones that are. Maybe we could put some kind of fire more buff on this chapter? Would make sense. Yeah. Does not make them any easier to deal with. I see a doorway. Let's move. Tower access granted. Get ready. 
Shepard. A commander <gasps> Shepard. Excellent timing. Put the gun down. No. Ariana tried to shoot me. Miranda's poisonous influence, no doubt. I'm sorry she missed. Where's Kai Lang? I don't know. Gone. He took my research and left us here to die. Miranda, can you hear me? That's close enough. Both of you. Kai Lang didn't finish the job, but I will. This ends here. On the contrary. Now that the Reapers are taken care of, we have a way out. Let her go. Shepard, don't let him take her. Shepard, please. I have no problem with you. I just want Oriana and the research data. You want a lot. You get your life in return. How much is that worth? All right. Take her. <laughs> but I want out alive. Deal? No. <laughs> no deal. We didn't say anything about... Did he hurt you? Right. <laughs> you alright? It's okay, Ori. You're safe now. I'm fine. I just... I want to get out of here. We will. Give me a minute, okay? Commander Shepard. Fancy meeting you here. We got a break. Are you alright? I'll be fine. Really. I don't know how you managed it, but I'm grateful you're here. How did you do all this? Finding my father didn't take long once I confirmed he worked for the elusive man. Just had to follow the lies. Once I saw what this place really was, I couldn't just walk away. Of course. Things got really complicated when Reapers showed up. And Kai Lang. You survived. Not many people could do that. When you mentioned he was involved, I took a few precautions. Probably saved my life. Yeah, like, if you don't read the Kai Lang dossier that Anderson sends you before talking to Miranda on the Citadel, where you warn her about him, you don't mention him. Mm. And so she doesn't survive. Well then. Made that mistake. Oof. Miranda, this whole thing was a huge risk. You should have told me. You have a war to win, Shepard. This was my fight. It's been a long time coming. You did it. It's over. Yes. I just wish my sister didn't have to see all this. About your father. I'm glad he's gone, Shepard. I'm sorry if that sounds cold. No. I understand. It's finally over. For both of us. We can stop running. Yes. You can. What's our status? Any intel we can use from this place? Research data is gone. But some basic facility information is still intact. Shuttle arrivals and departures. Cerberus included. No direct links, but it's a start. Grab anything you can off the computer. We'll take it back to be analyzed. I can do better than that. What? Before Kai Leng took off, I planted a tracer on him. If you act fast, you'll track him right to the elusive man. A tracer? Nice. Sounds like you thought of everything. <sighs> Not quite, but... <sighs> Nobody's perfect. Thanks, Miranda. Character development. Exactly what we need. Thought you might need some good news. Damn right. What's next for you two? Get her someplace safe. Get the scratch cleaned up. Okay. I'm gonna follow all this up. I'll be in touch, Shepard. Soon. <coughs> I hope so. Come on, Ari. We've had enough of Father's hospitality. Let's make sure everyone knows about this place. Communication scrambler disabled. Listen to me. This is not a refugee camp. This is a Cerberus facility run Cortez, by my father. We need Henry to pick Wilson. up at the tower. Roger that. I've had enough of this place. Yeah. <sighs> oh. <sighs> 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 
I wasn't in favor of your diversion to Sanctuary, Commander. Too many unknowns. But I was wrong. The Cerberus lab you raided hinted at something big. But we never expected this. All those refugees, all that slaughter. Just to study indoctrination. Sanctuary did need to be shut down, sir. What they learned about the Reapers wasn't worth all those lives. It's useful intel, Commander, but you're right. The cost was too high. Do we have a location on the elusive man? Yes. We had a tracer on Kai Lang when he reported back. Good. That gives us a fighting chance to take Cerberus out of this war. Agreed. We need to end Cerberus and focus on the Reapers. My thoughts exactly. Hack it out. <laughs> Which means we're not going to do that. We're going to go do something else. Of course. Uh, mostly because the moment we launch Priority Cerberus Headquarters, there is no going back. Oh my. We've hit the point of no return. What is that? I know, right? Fair enough. Admiral Hackett has requested your help with a Cerberus fighter base on Navaria. Well, we can take care of that. What do we got here? Okay. From Liara, about beacons. Shepard, ships are seeding my beacons through the galaxy, but we can't risk they'll remain undiscovered. After what happened on Thessia, this is something I need to address. Our successors need all the help they can get. I've identified several species that may help shape the next cycle. The aliens in the Alpha Satari system, the Kirik, and the Yog. We need to place beacons close to their homeworlds, but not so near to adversely affect their primitive civilizations. It's difficult to balance, but their moon should be suitable. I've keyed the coordinates into the galaxy map. I know we have little time to spare, but I feel it's something we need to do. Better not. Cerberus data. Glyph has decrypted a file on the old shadow broker that the old shadow broker had on Cerberus. It was tagged with your name. It looks like the data was taken from a base on Naphos. Did you give this to him? In any case, it is valuable information. It contains the location of a dozen cells, some of which are still active, and more importantly, decryption key protocols. We might be able to infiltrate the entire Cerberus network with this. I have passed the information to Hackett in Fifth Fleet Command. Nice. I have no idea what Nephos was. No idea. But nice. From Kasumi. From CEO at Hawk Industries. Sure. <laughs> Hi, Ship. Huh, looks like this external account is still working. I'm sure our old friend won't mind me using it. It's got top level encryption, after all. Thought you might want to know how much fun it's been working on the Crucible. How much more exciting than I first thought. As there are so many secrets we've found if you happen to be like a bit of snooping. One bit of information has the high up people so awed and scared they're not even willing to discuss it with their own teams. People whispering and having closed door meetings and like, all very secret. Well, that's just t too much for a thief of my skills. So I've been getting into all sorts of places to find out more. And it's really big news, as the Crucible has a few tricks up its sleeve we weren't supposed to know about. Sure, people have been planning this thing for a long time, trying to build something to stop the Reapers. And it was always odd that the Reapers would not catch on and just erase any data related to it. Well, it seems they did know, and that they had a failsafe in place. So if the thing got built, something would activate in the Crucible that would stop it working as a weapon. It's something buried so deep in specifications, and such a little thing that it could be easily missed. Tricky squids in their indoctrination. They must have been manipulating this along with everything else. Heck, <laughs> bet they never thought that so many people would be working on this version. We've got Rachni crawling all over the place, sticking their feelers in places they shouldn't, passing on information to those clever Solarians. They, in turn, are consulting with the Asari, who seem to know a lot more about the Protheans than they let on before, so everybody's working together to combine their knowledge. So many species with so many different insights, and while the big meetings are boring, especially if you have to sit in an air vent to hear it all, they have a <laughs> purpose as, as we may have figured out how the thing really works, how to avoid any last minute surprises or traps. All this duplicity and trickery makes a good thief giddy with excitement, and I just had to share it with you. The thing is, none of it would have been possible if you hadn't brought folks together, so I thought you should know. Take care of that ship. Ta-ta! <laughs> <laughs> <That's coughs> uh, gotta love Kasumi. Yeah, why do you think I asked you to bring her back into... <laughs>
A and N on the Corian fleet. Palavin, the Turian hierarchy, one of the most powerful and respected ground forces in the galaxy, are today paying respects to an unlikely ally, the Marines of the Corian fleet. The weakened immune systems of Corians normally means their forces are restricted to ships. But when an emergency technical team was requested to repair a ground-based comm relay, providing vital in intel to the Corian military, one Corian stepped up. Commanded by, a, by squad leader Cal Rieger, the Corian team prepared to, repaired the comm system and sacrificed their lives holding the position until Krogan troops arrived. When Turian troops offered to provide evac support, Rieger refused, insisted they could not relay, risk the relay falling. He said multiple breaches to their exosuits made evacuation impossible. We're all dead anyway, Rieger reportedly said. Just make them pay for it. A spokesman for Primarch Victus praised the squad's bravery. Whatever our past politics, today the galaxy stands united against a single threat, Victus said. We are humbled by the sacrifice of our allies from Rannoch, and we promise to return the honor. Cal Rieger is the Marine, the only Marine to survive Tally's mission on Haystrom in the last game. Oh, yeah. And he was ready to die to get us just a tally. Mm-hmm. And Good. the same thing. So he could die on Pet Palavan. Funny how that works. Yeah, well... He saved more people because of it. <sighs> yeah. Something. Right. So, next up, we have a Corian... Not Corian, a... Cerberus fighter base to... To blow the fuck up. And one last DLC to take care of. Yep. So we can kick that over next time. Bye-bye.